Crazy fan theories are great, aren't they? Recently, I stumbled across a rather interesting Kotaku article claiming that Fallout 4 and Skyrim take place in the same universe. Now, this is actually a theory I've heard quite a bit in both the Fallout and the Elder Scrolls communities, so after seeing this article, I thought I'd share my own personal thoughts on it. Which are pretty much that I think the theory is a complete load of crap, but it's still a really interesting topic to discuss. So without further ado, let's read this article and get into the theory. Right off the bat, I want to say that I have a problem with the title of this article, since it should be entitled Fallout and Elder Scrolls might be in the same universe. Because contrary to popular belief, Fallout 4 isn't the only game in the Fallout franchise, and Skyrim isn't the only game in the Elder Scrolls series. Anyways, in essence, the entire theory as presented in this article is based on an easter egg hidden in Fallout 4. If you make your way to the Pridwin and go to the research station, you can find a rather familiar looking plant that is simply called Experimental Plant. Taking a closer look at this plant, it's pretty evident that it's none other than Nernroot, which as I'm sure you all know is a plant from the Elder Scrolls series. They both even have a similar glow, so at the very least this is Bethesda's attempt to reference their other big franchise. If you're still not convinced of this, next to the plants there's a terminal that logs the discovery of this plant. The entries are under the label NRT, which is probably short for Nernroot, and moreover the experimental plant is found at the mouth of a river, while in the Elder Scrolls series, Nernroot is said to only grow by the water. One final similarity between the two is that they both survived some pretty crazy catastrophes in their respective universes. In Elder Scrolls lore, the Sun's death was a catastrophic event that took place after the Red Mountain erupted in the First Era, and Nernroot somehow survived this event. In the Fallout universe, you of course had the Great War, which the experimental plant also survived. The article goes on to suggest that Fallout and Elder Scrolls are set in the same universe because of this plant, and additionally states that Fallout is set in the past, whereas Elder Scrolls is set in the future. Now, I concede that this article is to some extent a joke article, but there is a small amount of seriousness here. More importantly though, a lot of the comments on this article put me off a little, since there are actually quite a few people who believe this theory. And that's not just the readers of this article, but people in the Fallout and Elder Scrolls communities in general. However, with all due respect, I think it's a complete load of bullshit. Bethesda's made a ton of references and easter eggs in Fallout 4 in general, and I'd say the best bet here is that they're just hinting at their other big franchise and nothing more. Even if you want to make some weird argument about how the Fallout universe went some sort of strange catastrophe and turned into the Elder Scrolls universe, or vice versa, this does not change the fact that both universes are fundamentally completely different, which makes me almost sure that there's no relation between the two. To give you an example of what I'm trying to get at here, above the world of Nern in the Elder Scrolls are two moons, whereas obviously in the Fallout world, you only have one moon. Moreover, while they may look similar, stars in the Elder Scrolls are completely different from those in the Fallout world. In Elder Scrolls lore, there are three major planes of existence. The first is Mundus, which encompasses Nern, including of course Tamriel, as well as its moons. Mundus is surrounded by the Plane of Oblivion, which as I'm sure most of you know is home to the Daedra and the 16 realms of the Daedric Princes. Finally, you have Aetherius, the Immortal Plane, which is the realm from where the Aedra and the Nine Divines originate. Sovngarde is actually a division of Aetherius, and moreover Aetherius can essentially be thought of as the dualistic inverse of Oblivion. Now, the way this relates to the stars is that both the Sun and the stars in the Elder Scrolls world are actually holes in the Plane of Oblivion that reach all the way from Nurn to Aetherius. It is these holes that permit the magic of Aetherius to reach Nurn, and in fact the Sun is Nurn's major source of magic. Conversely, in the Fallout universe, the Sun and stars are defined in the same way they are in the real world as giant burning balls of hydrogen and other gases deep in space. The point here is that the Sun and stars are defined so differently in each franchise that they can't possibly be part of the same universe no matter what sort of crazy transformation you come up with. I've heard the argument that Fallout and Elder Scrolls take place in different galaxies, but even across galaxies within the same universe, the stars ought to be the same. So this idea pretty much disproves the theory outright. The thing is, my main problem with the article isn't even this. I really have no problem with wild theories like this in general, since it's always fun to speculate and theorycraft about this type of stuff. Having a theory that others perceive as wrong or off base isn't necessarily bad or something to get worked up about. Rather, the problem here for me is more of a philosophical issue. 
To help you guys understand what I'm trying to get at, I'll need to talk about the history of the Fallout franchise here for a bit. Now, for those of you who don't know, Bethesda did not make the first two Fallout games. The original concept behind Fallout and much of the genius behind the franchise is instead the work of Black Isle Studios, the developer who made the original two Fallout games. It was only after these games, which by the way are out of this world good, especially Fallout 2, that Bethesda inherited the franchise. When making the original Fallout, Black Isle Studios drew inspiration from another game known as Wasteland, as well as other post-apocalyptic media such as Mad Max. They were not in any way inspired by the Elder Scrolls for what should be obvious reasons. In saying that Fallout and Elder Scrolls might be a part of the same universe, the article is basically completely disregarding the original genius and inspiration behind the Fallout franchise since there's absolutely no way Black Isle Studios was thinking of the Elder Scrolls series when putting together the original Fallout. It's almost as though the article is saying, hey here's two Bethesda franchises and here's an easter egg, so Bethesda must have made them a part of the same universe. Which can't possibly be because Bethesda didn't come up with the original concept for the Fallout franchise. Even though this article isn't being entirely serious, it completely disregards the roots of the Fallout franchise and essentially throws away the genius behind two amazing games in Fallout 1 and 2. I don't consider myself to be an elitist Fallout fanboy, and I'm an equally large fan of both The Elder Scrolls and Fallout, but what I am is a fan of Fallout 1 and 2, so when you disregard those games, then yeah, I'm gonna be a bit upset. So, I guess the takeaway here is that theories and speculation are perfectly fine, but be sure to respect the franchises that you're speculating about. Well, alright folks, that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed, be sure to drop me a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more Fallout and Elder Scrolls content in the future. Also, be sure to let me know your thoughts down below on the article. Do you like the theory or do you dislike it like I do? Otherwise, I hope you all have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.